rabbit production throughout history has been favored by both rural and urban residents, in particular when faced with limited production resources, thus making it ideal for various recovery scenarios. It also offers one of the few environmentally friendly options for meeting the rising global demand for animal protein. Rabbit meat production is therefore an attractive proposition, especially when the aim is to produce quality animal protein with minimal investments. As such the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has been promoting and supporting rabbit production in number of countries, as an effective tool for maintaining food security and for improving income generation. Rabbits reared with techniques adapted to specific environments can do much to improve the family diet, at the same time supplying a regular source of income. In efficient production systems, rabbits are effective in turning consumed plant proteins into edible meat, similar to broiler chickens and significantly better than pigs and cattle. Rabbits can easily convert the available proteins in cellulose-rich plants, whereas it is not economical to feed these to poultry. For countries with no cereal surpluses, rabbit meat production is an especially interesting prospect. The quality of meat obtained from rabbits contains high protein and low fat, making it appropriate for all age groups of people. Cattle or sheep raised for meat have a low prolificacy and produce few offspring per year compared to rabbits. In addition rabbits reach market weight of at least 2 kilograms at the age of 3 months. Taking care of rabbits is quite easy. Each female gives birth to 8 to 10 rabbits, and some even to 11. It is true that these days, large rabbit breeding enterprises are not functioning in Georgia. However, production of rabbits among farmers and the population has not disappeared and is still popular. About 60 breeds of domesticated rabbits are produced in the world, among which, few are popular in Georgia as well. Interest for rabbit breeding is increasing as time goes, and as different rabbit breeds express their characteristics in different ways. Using appropriate methods when caring for rabbits is essential, by keeping strict control over the feeding schedule and by meeting the animal health requirements, it is possible to achieve highest profitability compared to other farm livestock. 50 rabbit does can kindle 30 to 35 young on average. This in few months equals 80 kilograms of meat. It is a realistic expectation that the young will achieve a slaughter weight of 3 kilograms over the period of 4 months. Still, rabbit production is impossible without proper hygiene. Well, certain result might be achieved by a farmer and reproduction can be ensured to a certain level. However, without proper sanitation, one might lose everything very fast. In order to succeed in breeding rabbits, it is more than important to choose an appropriate breed. We try to select breeds that bring multiple benefits. First of all, we use breeds that grow quickly, providing meat at minimum expense. At the same time, they need to easily adapt to our climate, which has cold winters and hot summers. Finally, they need to be resistant to diseases. We use simple, or two breed crossing. Females of one breed, are crossed with males of another breed, resulting in young rabbits with improved growth and muscular development, and with improved numerical productivity of the does. We are also crossing the pure breed for self-renewal of the female stock. We use the following breeds and combinations. The Belgian Plandry is a combined meat and fur breed. It does not like rapid weather changes. It reaches an adult weight of up to 8 kilograms and produces large litters which easily adapt to production in cages. The Belgian Plandry achieves huge sizes, which attracted my attention. If it's in the farmer's interest to get physically large animals, growing up to 5 kilograms in live weight, then they should choose the Belgian Plandry. The breed has several specific features, huge body, ears which are big and fat, large head and paws. Overall, it looks very big. But beyond its positive characteristics it also has shortcomings. It does not reproduce as intensively as other breeds do. For me as a producer, 
The Belgian Plandry is one of the best breeds for cross-breeding. We usually select and cross-breed does of Dark Giant, with bucks of the Belgian Plandry. As a result, we get larger progeny, weighing more than the original purebreed animals of the Dark Giant. The Californian is an exclusively meat production breed. It easily adapts to weather fluctuations and can be kept in cages both outdoors and indoors. Adult live weight is up to 5 kilograms. It grows fast and reproduces often. At the age of 2 months, rabbits weigh on average 2 kilograms. The Californian breed of rabbits is quite well distributed all over the world and it has been introduced in Georgia for quite some time. It has an average slaughter yield of 60%. It requires special attention for acquiring optimal meat fatness and good taste characteristics. The breed has very good reproductive traits including, timely gestations, nursing all of the young in the litter, and most important a fast growth rate. At the age of 3 months the rabbits achieve up to 3.5 kilograms of live weight, with an excellent slaughter yield. This yield ratio among rabbit producers is considered as a very good achievement. The breed is easily distinguishable, as it has notable black spots on the head, ears and paws. The tail is commonly colored black. The Californians breed most prominent characteristic is the reproduction from 6 to 8 times per year, while other breeds made up to 4 times per year. The high reproduction rate depends on the proper care, the intensity of feeding and the food quality. The Californians gestation occurs even when the female is surrounded by bunnies from its previous litter. This characteristic is not common among other rabbit breeds which can reproduce only after the litter has been removed. The Californian breed has a very gentle temper, and it is not aggressive. It is stress resistant, doesn't scare easily, and communicates well with people. I would personally recommend keeping of the Californian rabbit as pure breed in continental climates. Once a sufficient number and supply of pure breed rabbits has been secured, only then cross breeding should be attempted. I recommend cross breeding of the Californian with the white giant breed. This rabbit breed is called Butterfly. It is a combined meat and fur breed, which adapts to weather changes very easily and reacts well when kept in cages. It draws its name from the distribution of the colored spots. If you examine the pattern of spots on the rabbit's nose, you will easily note the shape of butterfly wings. The butterfly breed in general is very tolerant and particularly resistant to diseases. For those just starting with rabbit breeding, the butterfly is the best breed to select and keep. The butterfly breed doesn't require high quality feed, and it's very stress resistant. It is distinguished by its litter sizes, as it can raise 9 to even 11 young simultaneously. Usually it reproduces 4 times per year. The Dark Giant is a meat breed of rabbits which is well known and used in Georgia. It adapts well to Mediterranean climate and production in cages. It combines good reproductive characteristics, good size of the young, and good quality of meat. Adult rabbits weigh up to 6 kilograms. However, the slaughter yield is significantly less compared to the Californian breed. It's particularly resistant to diseases. Number of rabbits per kindling is up to 10, with 4 litters per year. Chinchilla is a very resistant has the best reproductive characteristics. It mates 5 to 6 times per year. 
This breed has one very prominent characteristic, which is the ability to be kept indoors and outdoors with good results. Chinchilla has quite strong paws, as you can see. It is able to dig and burrow. The breed can be kept indoors and outdoors exposed to the weather, with only limited control. The slaughter yield is quite high, up to 60%. I can without doubt say that Chinchilla is the only breed which in our conditions can compete with the Californian breed. It is also a little bit aggressive, which makes it less stress resistant. New breeds which were recently introduced in Georgia include the Giant and the Belgian Giant. Their overall body size attracted my interest. However, once we started breeding them, it turned out their main advantage was not the size, but rather the improved productive performance. A rabbit producer should not aim only at the size and weight, but instead he should assess the efficiency of the breeds. As a producer I focus on meat production, the rabbit breeds I presented are providing acceptable results and are performing well in the current conditions. It is important for a rabbit producer to focus on the individual characteristics of each breed, and on the preferences of the market. This will help him to choose the breeds and their combinations that provide the best results. Selection of the reproductive animals is a necessary activity for every farm, regardless of its size. The producer must observe the production, select the best characteristics in each breed and further develop them. Rabbit breeding in Georgia is practiced by using two different systems. Larger farmers usually use buildings, while smaller producers tend to produce rabbits in outdoor cages. In this training video we will review both production systems. This is a building used for rabbit farming. The most important requirements for indoor rabbit farms are the temperature, humidity and ventilation. Rabbits easily tolerate temperatures between 0 and 30 degrees Celsius, however when ambient temperatures exceed 35 degrees the rabbits are stressed due to hypothermia. Rabbits are sensitive to low humidity below 55%, as dry hot air upsets the secretion of mucus, while the droplets which carry infectious respiratory agents shrink and fly further. High humidity has no effect in moderate temperatures. However, on hot days when the ambient reaches the rabbit's body temperature, high humidity results in discomfort. Low temperature and high humidity result in condensed water on the equipment, penetrating cold and heat loss. Digestive and respiratory disorders often follow. Abrupt changes in humidity can also produce negative effects. Therefore constant humidity of 60 to 65 percent is optimal. Both male and female rabbits develop well on 16 hours of light, as long as they are not exposed to direct sunlight. Now, let's review how a cage for rabbit production should look like. First of all there should be enough space for the doe and the box with her litter, so the cage needs to be large enough to accommodate them. The cages should not be overstocked, as rabbits have to be able to move, turn and hop in their cages. Rabbits drink and eat at any time of the day, although they feed most at night. The rabbits eat slowly and therefore feed and water should be available and not rationed. The breeder must provide a drinker, feeder and fodder rack for each cage, and should not allow the feed to get dirty. This particular farm practices semi-intensive production and provides unprocessed roughage as complementary feed. Each cage has a rack for rough food, which is located between two cages. In this manner the roughage section serves two neighboring cages and the rabbits can reach the feed from both sides. Each cage has an individual feeder for concentrated feed. The rabbits can approach the feeder at all times from inside the cage. 
At the same time the farmer can clean it and add more concentrate. An adult rabbit drinks half a litre of water per day in summer. Therefore, a stable supply of clean water is needed. Rabbits fed with dry and concentrated diet, need more water at all times. Next to the feeder you can see a primitive water drinker, placed on each of the cages. Polyethylene bottles are used as water reservoirs, allowing the farmer to assess the quantity of water drunk by the rabbit, and the need to refill. In such primitive systems it's desirable that the water is changed every morning and evening. It is also possible to connect the individual drinkers on each cage with a common system for water supply. You can see here a typical water supply system, with a large common reservoir which supplies water to several nipple drinkers, fixed on each of the cages. As the rabbit pushes on the nipple with the lips, water will start dripping into the rabbit's mouth. The common system has few advantages. It is firstly a closed water supply system, there is little wastage and there is no need to change the water twice per day. It is actually possible just to refill the reservoir, once the water has been used up during the day. It also allows easy administration of medicine, which is quite often provided to rabbits through the drinking water. Administration of preventive or curative treatments through the water, allow reduced stress, and properly calculated concentrations which are automatically delivered to the whole rabbit population. The cages need to be positioned on a certain height from the floor. In this case they are placed on roughly half a meter, allowing easy access. The space below the cages is for accumulation of manure and feed waste which in this type of farms has to be cleaned every morning and evening. Farmers that want to upgrade can install special shafts and transportation systems which automatically eliminate the manure from the facilities. Cleanliness, it is the most important thing. Cleanliness. I have an extensive experience with production of rabbits. I worked at the Timurashini rabbit breeding farm for 25 years. We left during the war, and when we settled here, I started breeding rabbits. I brought three rabbits with me, and after eight months I have more than 120 rabbits. If you want to produce rabbits, you have to keep the rabbit farm very clean. Rabbits like fresh air which comes from regular cleaning. The rabbitry must have a minimum ventilation to evacuate the harmful gases and excess humidity. Rabbits have difficulties to adapt to the harmful methane and ammonium which originate from the manure and urine. Harmful gases from the manure and decaying feed weaken the respiratory tract and the immune system, and allow onset of diseases. The floor has to have intonation so the urine and washed down water can flow out via the channel. In every type of rabbit production, the producer has to remove the excrement and waste from the rabbitry, including straw litter and droppings. Rabbits produce 25 to 400 grams of feces and up to 0.8 liters of urine per cage a day. This waste is much richer in nutrients than ordinary farm manure and is best when used as fresh fertilizer. But when you use a building for more than a year, bacteria tends to build up. These bacteria can cause various diseases and even death in the rabbits. Therefore I recommend regular disinfection. The rabbit farmer should use tested and known disinfecting chemicals when the production is ongoing in the building. If none are available it is allowed to use lime for disinfection. Lime washing of walls is not harmful in any way, and when the walls are not too rough, it is particularly effective. I recommend lime washing of the building walls from two to three times per year. Disinfection with ash is also quite effective, especially for the floor and when we need to keep minimum expense. You can use fire with ash. You should dilute 2.5 kilograms of ash in 10 liters of water and boil it. Then you should spray the liquid on the contaminated floor. This very cheap disinfection liquid gives a very good result. 
states the rabbits are easily susceptible to diseases shared by other domestic animals and we should not forget the specific rabbit diseases. We should not keep other domestic animals close to the rabbitry in order to prevent pathogens from entering the building. This especially goes for poultry and birds. Rodents are carriers of many parasitic and infectious diseases and they also can attack the young rabbits. The rabbit farmer should prepare for rodent control and should use traps to exterminate rats and mice. Stress adversely influences the rabbits in general, especially when they are nursing their young. Touching or moving the animals, in particular by an unknown person, should be avoided. Right. It is not allowed to touch the rabbits and nest in one cage, and then put your hands in another cage. In such cases the doe can sense the different smell, and might eat its young. Cannibalism also occurs when the doe is stressed. Rabbits do not like noise, they prefer calm environment. As fewer visitors are allowed to enter the rabbitry the better. It is also desirable that the farmer changes his clothes and shoes before entering the rabbitry. This reduces the chance for introduction of harmful pathogens and prevents disease to be carried into the building. Breeding rabbits outdoors is also possible, especially if you lack facilities for indoor production. Rabbits in principle are protected by their fur from moderate cold. They are more sensitive to a combination of cold and humid weather. In countries like Russia, Ukraine and the Baltic states where climate conditions are more extreme, indoor rabbit production is mostly practiced. In more moderate climates like in Georgia, where the winters are shorter and milder, outdoor rabbit production is a good option. An outdoor breeding of rabbits is often conducted in rabbit hutches, like the one we see here. This is a typical rabbit hutch for moderate climates, although various designs exist. A farmer can easily build such hutches himself, with readily available and cheap materials. The major principle to observe is to have the back and sides of the cage closed, in order to avoid penetration of draft and wind. The floor is typically made of mesh, in order for the droppings and urine to fall through. There are various meshes available, including from plastic and wood. However, Galvanized steel wire mesh is most common and allows easy cleaning. Two large gaps in the mesh can injure the rabbit's paws, while two small will keep the droppings in. In very cold, rainy and windy weather, the whole cages or the openings should be covered by plastic sheets, cardboard, or other material. Straw should be laid down on the floor as insulation. Inside the hutch there should always be a feeding bowl for concentrated feed. As you can see, the design between the two cages or hutch compartments includes a roughage rack where grass or hay can be deposited. The individual water bowl is located inside the cage. The hutch design must ensure room for a nest or access to a separate compartment with the nest where the doe can enter and nurse her young. In this hutch, the nest is not part of the main area. It is attached to the side of the hutch and connected through a hole. This allows the doe to leave the nest for feeding, or for resting, and does not restrict her movement. Rabbit hunches should be placed in shade, or at least turned away from the sun. 
Rabbits do not tolerate well direct sunlight and high summer temperatures. In outdoor rabbit production, there is little cause for concern for build-up of harmful gases, unlike buildings for indoor rabbit farming. If you are just starting with rabbit production, you will need four rabbit cages or hutch compartments for the production cycle of one pair of rabbits. You need one cage for the female rabbit, or also called a doe, and for her nest where she nurses young rabbits. Keep in mind, a doe mates and kindles young at least four times per year. The second cage is for the male rabbit, or also called the buck. One adult buck can service up to eight does. The last two cages are for growing of the young weaned rabbits, or also called friars. Rabbits are weaned at four to five weeks, and usually reach slaughter weight at the age of four months. The most optimal conversion of feed is recorded in stocking densities with less than 12 friars per one meter square of flooring. However, the more space is allocated per rabbit the better. As they are active animals and want to play, move and hop. I consider alfalfa or also called lucerne as the best and most natural feed for rabbits, which is complemented with concentrated feed. Luckily, Georgia has a steady supply of lucerne hay for rabbit production. Lucerne is sown once in five to seven years, and can be mowed at least three times per season, depending on the irrigation needed and available. I consider the lucerne to have better characteristics than metal hay. It contains more protein and it is an irreplaceable feed for rabbit production. Rabbits enjoy eating lucerne, which means more intake and faster growth compared to other feed. It is best to mow the alfalfa during the budding phase, as it is rich with nutrients and reaches the best nutritional value. The rabbit farmer needs to understand the lucerne production well, in order to ensure good feed for his animals. If the hay is mowed early it has reduced nutritional value. If it is gathered and baled without drying, it can easily spoil. If the hay is gathered and baled too dry, it will break in small pieces and the leaves will fall through the cage mesh, resulting in high feed losses. How do we prepare the lucerne hay for feeding of rabbits and ensure the best use and minimum wastage? We take a large utensil with water and we soak the lucerne for a maximum of two hours. We submerge only the quantity of lucerne to be consumed by the rabbits the same day. Since the sour fermentation in the wet lucerne starts fast, the wet and stale hay will not be suitable for feeding the next day. The utensil with water should be in a cool and shaded place, since high temperatures overheat the lucerne, initiating the fermentation process. Feeding of the rabbits with sour lucerne hay will result in diarrhea and production losses. Once soaked the lucerne will not lose its leaves as they tend to stay on the stems, resulting in high quality feed with good production effect. It is important that we abstain from soaking of the lucerne in cold weather and in winter, especially when the temperature is below freezing. If soaked the feed becomes very cold and if not served on room temperature, it might harm the rabbits, especially the does in gestation as it cools their organism. For optimal production effects and minimum wastage, it would be best to use appropriately balanced and pelleted concentrated feed. Unfortunately, such feed is not available in Georgia. Therefore, I prepare my own concentrate recipe which I will now demonstrate. This recipe satisfies all of the nutritional requirements of the rabbits. I use oats as the major concentrated feed component. I use 1 to 10 ratio, which means that to 10 kilograms of oat grain, I add 1 kilogram of granulated sunflower meal and 5% of oil cake. In the mix we add vitamin and mineral supplements, in a ratio of 1 gram of supplement to 1 kilogram of mix. We also add, half a percent of kitchen salt, between 8 and 10 percent of barley meal, and a bit of edible sunflower oil. If medical treatment of rabbits is required, we can also add antibiotics to the mix. However, keep in mind that some antibiotics are very toxic to rabbits.
now we finalize the mix. Please note that we do not grind the components, just mix them. There is no need to fragment the grains, as it leads to more waste. Finally, you can see the ready concentrated feed for rabbits. The concentrate mix is fed to adult rabbits once per day. Fattening rabbits for slaughter are fed twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Nursing doe and rabbit fryers up to the age of three months are fed three times a day. We can use different tree branches to feed rabbits. In my experience willow branches are one of the best feeds, as it is available everywhere, and it is easy to gather. The rabbits eat the whole branches, not just the leaves, which ensure the proper development of the rabbit teeth, making them healthier and stronger. Tree branches are especially vital feed for rabbits in early spring, when green feed is not available. There is no need for special preparation, you can easily add the branches to the roughage rack, and the rabbits really enjoy eating them. Keep in mind that rabbits kept outdoors throughout the year, need one third more feed, compared to rabbits kept indoors. As they need extra energy to keep warm. We can see here different kinds of meadow grasses, and which type of grass you would choose for your rabbits. Which type do they like more? Well, they prefer these kinds of grasses. I usually feed them with these kinds, as they are quite good. Actually, rabbits will eat almost all kinds of grasses, however we should remember not to give them wet grass. We should not feed the rabbits with grass collected near to roads, as it contains many exhaust particles, dust and heavy metals. We should also avoid collecting grass from fields where herbicides and fertilizers have been recently used. I visit the rabbits every morning and I check if they are well, or if they are sick, and if they do not eat. However, if properly kept, such cases are quite rare, as usually they are very hungry, like wolves, and are even ready to eat me. Before proceeding I will explain about handling of rabbits. Always keep in mind that they should be handled gently. It is often the opinion that we should lift the rabbits holding them by their ears. This is not a proper approach, and should not be practiced under any circumstance. The proper way of lifting rabbits is like this, firmly taking it by the fur and the skin above its front legs, and not near to the neck. At the same time we put the other hand below and behind the tail of the rabbit and we support it, like this. This makes the weight balanced. In such a posture the rabbit feels calm and is less stressed. In addition, the person holding the rabbit is safe, as sometimes a larger rabbit can hurt a person by throwing a paw. Before mating of the rabbits we have to assess their condition and decide if the doe is ready for mating and pregnancy. The rabbit doe needs to be rested from the previous gestation, it should look well and healthy and should not have any external injuries. One can easily assess the rabbit's health on basis of the fur quality. A doe ready for mating should not have ear canker, or poda dermatitis on the paws. If the doe is ready for mating, we take her to the buck's cage, and never vice versa. Mating happens quickly. There is no need to leave the doe with the buck for more than necessary. If the rabbits are ready for mating, the whole process takes just five minutes. After 12 days we can check by hand if the mating was successful. When checking, it is not recommended to lift the doe, 
it is better to check in the cage itself. Like this, we hold her with one hand, and we examine the belly gently with the other hand. If the doe is pregnant, we will be able to feel several nut-sized lumps in the belly. With time the lumps will get bigger. An adult doe and buck should be used for mating for up to three years. After this period we need to replace them, as their fertility decreases. One buck can mate successfully with one doe, or even two in a day. After I have checked that the doe is older than three months, and that it is healthy, I bring her to the buck for mating. Some females are not ready to mate successfully, until they are four months of age. Before we bring the doe to the buck, we have to remove the feeder and water bowls from the cage. After the mating, the doe is taken back to a freshly cleaned cage and treated with her favorite feed. Each doe rabbit of the breeds we keep, must mate and kindle four times per year. Beside keeping good hygienic conditions during the mating, we should take care in timing of the reproduction cycles. Mating and pregnancy should be avoided in very cold or very hot weather, like midwinter and midsummer. It is best to start the cycle in spring and continue in autumn. For proper planning we need to keep records on each cage, providing details on each of the rabbits. Right. The notes are about their age and the month when the last mating and gestation took place. Two days before the kindling, the doe pulls fur from around her chest, stomach and breasts, and uses the fur to prepare a nest for the young. There are some doe rabbits which will eat their young if you do not supply them with food and water on time. It does not matter how close a person is to you. Even if asked by a neighbor or a relative, never agree to borrow your bucks for mating. Also never borrow bucks for mating yourself, as it is quite easy to introduce diseases in your rabbitry. We have to take into account that a young doe has less milk, and we have to leave fewer rabbit young for nursing, five to six maximum. After three to four gestations, it is possible to leave more young for nursing as the doe's breasts and milk flow increases. Two days after the kindling takes place, the doe rabbit is usually ready for the next mating. Lactation and gestation are quite compatible during this period. The doe should be allowed to nurse the young for 30 days. Milk is the only feed the rabbit young get during this period. A doe is left together with the same number of young rabbits as the number of breasts it has. A rabbit doe has four pair of breasts. The rabbit farmer may decide it is necessary to eliminate excess newborn rabbits in a large litter, or they may be fostered by a doe with a smaller litter. When fostering, no more than three or four young rabbits should be given to a foster doe. The maximum age difference between the foster does litter and the fostered young should be 48 hours and the fostering should take place within three days of the kindling. Their first starts to grow when the young rabbits are five days old and when they are 12 to 14 days old they will open their eyes. The young rabbits begin to eat solid feed at 18 to 20 days and at 30 days the does milk provides no more than 20% of the nutrients. The young rabbits are usually weaned when 30 to 35 days old and weigh up to 500 grams. In some cases nursing is reduced to continues up to 45 days. The weaning period depends on the breed and how well developed and grown the rabbit young are. This rabbit is very well developed, its belly looks a bit swollen, which means that the doe is nursing it adequately. Otherwise, it would be very slim. Weaning of the young should be conducted gradually. At first, the well-developed young rabbits are removed, two or three at the time, while the weak ones are left for one to two weeks longer with the doe. The weaned young are usually taken to another cage. However, sometimes we can also remove the doe and leave the young in the familiar environment. This practice reduces the stress of weaning and the young easily get used to living without the doe. A rabbit farmer must perform health controls every day, and this is very important. 
walking around the cages and observing if there is any change in the behavior of the rabbits should be a routine. Rabbits react quickly to diseases, they become dull, and lose their appetite. Observe the rabbits, and in particular pay attention to their fur. A healthy rabbit has smooth and shimmering fur. The fur of a sick rabbit, on the contrary, is uneven and lifeless and it starts falling off easily. The most common health problem among rabbits is inflammation of the paw pads, which is also known as pododermatitis. This is an inflammatory process caused by trauma, due to the pressure on the soles, caused by rough and abrading floors. Genetics play a role too, and such cases happen quite often. It usually starts with a hairless spot. The skin is thickened, inflamed and red. Necrotic tissue in the center of the affected area can also appear. Ulcers and abscesses also can develop. The consequential bacterial infection can be accompanied by purulent white mass. If the wound remains untreated, the infection will spread to the inner tissues. At this stage there is little we can do to successfully treat the rabbit. Right, it is not a rare occurrence, especially if the rabbit is heavy. How do you treat the inflammation? Hydrogen peroxide is the most effective treatment for such injuries. However, we can use also other disinfectants. We have to make sure that wound is cleaned well and often. The disease, Ikanka or skin mange, is very common. It is a parasitic disease caused by mites. The infestation is frequently complicated with bacterial infections. The mites burrow in the skin causing itching, flaking and plugging of the ear canal. If left untreated, inflammation of the middle ear can follow. We treat the mites with a vermictin. That is the best treatment I have managed to find so far. We use it as drops applied directly in the ear canal, or we can administer as injection. On average we use half a gram per rabbit. However, treated rabbits cannot be eaten for several months. For more information on rabbit production you can download the free FAO book, The Rabbit, Husbandry, Health and Production, from the following link. To access the publication you can also simply search the internet via any browser, using the keywords, FAO, Rabbit and Book.